How do I eat every day to perform and to win? What's up guys? This is not going to be your average cooking show today. This is something that you guys requested. You want to know what I eat in a day. We're going to take you through the process step by step. This is how freaking winners eat, man. I'm not some artisan cook. I eat for fuel and I eat to perform. That's what everything in this video is going to be about. Get ready. Let's do it. If I'm going to go train, if I'm going out for a long run in the morning, if I'm going down to the CrossFit gym, whatever I'm gonna do, if I'm training in the morning, I'm not gonna eat a full breakfast right before I go out and train, right? If I go train, what I'm gonna eat before I go out to do whatever it is I'm doing is two pieces of this toast, all right? This is Ezekiel bread. I take two pieces out, two slices out, throw them in the toaster, all right? Once I do that, I'm going to put some of this pecan butter on my toast and I'm going to drizzle some honey over it. I'm going to eat two pieces of that toast then I'm going to go out and train. Now once I get back in from training we're going to eat a full breakfast at that point every day. All right. So I'm going to talk to you guys what that is composed of. We already talked about the toast. Um, three eggs, bacon, some rice, I'll show you guys how to make this rice in a little bit. Some good cheese, Talamook cheese, extra sharp cheddar cheese. That's the only cheese that I eat. And some Kerrygold Irish butter. Really good butter right here. The food that you use matters, right? The quality of the cheese. Not Don't just use cheap, crappy cheese. The quality of the butter. The quality of my chickens laid these eggs, right? The quality of the ingredients matter. Um, so come on around. I'll show you how I cook my full breakfast every morning when I get done with training. All right, so we just came in from PT. We're going to eat our full breakfast. Uh, I've got uh, two more slices of my Ezekiel toast in the toaster. I'm going to go ahead and drop those. Uh, again, I eat bacon almost every morning. I'm not going to cook bacon for you guys because if you don't know how to cook bacon, you're an idiot. Just throw it in the pan and keep turning it over till it's at the right crispiness for your, uh, for your flavor, all right, for your palate. I usually eat three eggs, all right? So here we go, we got our pan hot. I'm gonna take my big block of Kerrygold butter right here. Anybody that thinks butter's not good for them is also an idiot. Butter is good for you if it's good butter. So just go ahead and slather that pan up with some butter. I'm gonna take my eggs right here I'm going to dump my eggs in the pan and immediately I'm taking a handful of my rice here and putting it in my eggs, all right? Rice is a really important part of my diet. I'm going to show y'all again how to make that rice here in just a little bit. It's off the chain. I'm going to scramble that eggs and that rice up together. That's warming the rice up. It's breaking apart. Now when those eggs start to get cooked. You don't want to overcook these eggs or they're going to taste like crap. So when they start to get cooked about like that, I'm going to take me a handful of that Talamook cheese I showed you guys earlier. I'm going to put them in there. Anybody thinks cheese is bad for them is silly as crap too. Cheese is good for you, man. Eat all the cheese you can get. It's got a lot of calories and fat in it. I'm going to scramble that cheese in there. Look at that. That's all you need to cook those eggs. Just like that. Don't cook your dang on eggs until they're dried out. They're going to taste like crap. All right, sweet. We're going to imagine this toast is done. Boom. All right, I would usually toast it just a little more brown than that, but that's got a good texture to it. I'm going to take me two big slabs of this butter right here, and I'm going to put it on that toast just like that. I'm about to have to get me some more of this pecan butter. Man, this pecan butter will change your life, I'm telling you. Peanut butter gets old. The flavor of peanut butter, I mean, I, I love peanut butter, but I just got tired of eating it. Now, I'm just going to take my darn honey, and I'm going to do just like this. 
All right. And then I'm going to take these two pieces of toast and I'm going to set them right on top of each other just like that. The only thing extra I would have on this plate if we were eating this here in just a minute would be some bacon. All right. I didn't cook my bacon because if you don't know how to cook bacon, you're a dummy. So once I eat breakfast, I move into my day, do whatever I need to do that day, usually go to work, uh, work a few hours, drive Blake crazy, and um, at least work until I get hungry again. Once I get hungry again, I start getting really angry and really irritable. So that's what forces me to have to eat lunch, okay? I wouldn't even eat lunch if I didn't have to, but uh, that's why I go with a smoothie because I generally don't have time during the day to prepare, to prepare some big extravagant lunch, okay? Um, so I prefer the smoothie for lunch. The first ingredient in our smoothie is gonna be a banana. We're just gonna break it up, throw it in there just like that. I mean, I throw it all in there, everything but the peel. All right, once I put my banana in, I'm gonna take some of this frozen fruit right here. This is Wyman's Mango Berry. It's mangoes, strawberries, and blueberries. Frozen fruit. We're gonna pour that in. We'll fill that blender up about halfway. All right, about right there. Once we get that in, I'm gonna put a half of an avocado in this thing. Give me some fat, and it gives the smoothie a nice creamy texture. All right, there's my half of avocado. Now, I'm gonna take some of this stuff my, uh, my guy Nick Bear gave me. The other day when I went to do his podcast, he gave me this strong food meal replacement. This gives me some good protein, fat, calories. Nick, you ought to send me some more of this if you see this video. Once I get my uh, meal replacement stuff in there, I'm gonna take a spoonful of this stuff right here. Nutso Power Fuel. I'm just gonna take me a good spoonful of this. Put it in there. All right. Last thing we're gonna add to this smoothie, we're gonna fill this thing up with water up to about the top of that frozen fruit. There we go. Now we're gonna put the lid on this joker and we're gonna, this little dial here does the speed. So we're gonna start off at about eight. Turn it on. Now you guys saw when I turned that thing on at eight, once it got to going, I went ahead and sped it up to about 10. Let it run for about 45 seconds or whatever, get it all blended together. And then you can see the consistency of that. It's nice and thick. It's not like just drinking down water. Uh, it's nice and cold. And man, it's got a good taste to it. That's a dang good smoothie right there. That joker will keep you going for about four hours. Okay, guys, we got through the day, had our smoothie for lunch. We're winding down, getting ready for dinner. I usually eat dinner probably around sometime between six and seven o'clock in the evening. I'm gonna talk to you guys about, whoa, that smoothie. I just got done with that smoothie. I'm gonna talk to you guys about what I eat for dinner probably three nights a week, all right? So this is the most common thing that I eat. We're gonna start with uh, the rice. You guys saw I put this rice in my eggs just a little bit ago. Rice is a big part of my diet. Uh, I think it, it just fuels me well. This is the kind of rice that I buy right here. Again, it's really important, the brand of the ingredients that you use, in my opinion. This is organic jazz, jasmati rice. Hey, this is some good stuff right here. All right, I'm gonna do one cup of rice. Now, this is really important. You've got to put this rice in this strainer right here, and you've got to wash this off in the darn sink with cold water. And you're gonna see the water coming out the bottom of this strainer. Now, you've gotta wait until that water coming out of the bottom of the strainer is clear. If you don't, you're gonna have the squirts for days and days. All right, sweet. 
I'm going to take this rice and put it straight into my pressure cooker or my Instapot. So that's one cup of rice. Now, we've got to put water in here. I'm going to put uh, one and a half cups of water. So if I do one cup of rice, I'm going to do one and a half cups of water. Told you. Got to be able to do math, son. One and a half cups of water to one cup of rice. Now, I'm going to take another scoop of my Kerrygold Irish butter here because butter's good for you. About like that. All right. And I'm going to put that butter in there on that rice. Now I'm going to take a scoop of this stuff right here. I don't even know what the crap this is, but I was my wife taught me to put this in my rice. It's organic, uh, better than bullion. I'm going to take me about, about that much. Y'all see that? <laughs> I'm going to take me about that much. Dump it off in this rice bowl right here. I'm just going to give out a stir. Outstanding. I'm going to hit uh, pressure cook, custom, five minutes, on high, start. I just leave that joker. It does what it does. All right, I'm going to talk, talk to y'all now about how to cook a really good ribeye steak. Sweet, we got our rice cooking. Man, the most important part of what we eat every single day is this big old slab of meat right here. This is a ribeye steak. It's a 1.11 pounds. Anywhere from one to two pounds is generally what I eat when it comes to my ribeye. Look, man, the vegans and all the vegetarian people and all that, they've had their heyday. Thank God people are starting to see through their bull crap. I don't know that there's been a single time in human history where humans have not eaten meat if it was available, all right? This is the most sustaining thing that I eat all day. Don't listen to all these folks that tell you freaking meat and stuff, meat and red meat and all that's bad for you. That's a bunch of bull crap, man. Every diet that you guys see come out, it's all a fad. It's a bunch of bull crap. Here's how you should eat. Work hard and eat what you crave. You know what I crave? A big old piece of ribeye. Let me tell you how to get this thing ready. You just pull it out of the pack, just like I did. You take some of this seasoning right here, three beer barbecue rub, season it. This is good stuff right here. Three beer barbecue rub. Now I'm gonna put me a, a nice liberal coat of this rub on this ribeye right here. And I'm gonna rub it in just like that. Just like you'd rub your wife's back. All these daggone people that don't eat red meat and ribeye and steaks and fat. That's why they're so weak. That's why humans are getting so weak. All right, this thing's ready for the grill. I'm gonna take y'all out to the grill, show you how to cook this thing. Sweet guys, so we're gonna get ready to throw this ribeye on the grill here or on the smoker. This is a Traeger uh, wood pellet smoker. I've got hickory pellets in this grill. Um, we're gonna cut this grill on 180. All right, temperature's gonna be 180. Now, a lot of people think you gotta clean these grills, man. You don't gotta clean this grill. Look at this dang grill. That gives, you that, that gives your meat flavor, son. You don't got to clean these grills every time you use them. That's a bunch of bull crap. Let this thing get dirty and full of flavor and you're gonna be good to go. We're on 180 with the Traeger. We're gonna take this ribeye and we're gonna set it right there. All right, we're gonna close the lid on this son of a gun. And I'm gonna start a timer for 90 minutes, okay? At 180. When I come back out here in 90 minutes, that steak's gonna be up to temperature. It's going to be about 130, 135. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that steak off, put it back on this pan, and I'm going to turn this grill all the way up as high as it'll go, 400. I'm going to turn it all the way to high, all right? Once it gets up to temperature, 
I'm gonna take that steak that I just smoked and I'm gonna set it back on that hot grate. I'm gonna cook it for one minute on each side. It's just gonna sear it one minute on each side. That joker's gonna be ready to eat, man. Outstanding, so our steak is done. We're ready to eat dinner. Again, we smoked that steak at 180 for 90 minutes. We pulled it off the grill, turned the, turned the smoker all the way up to 400, as high as it would go. We seared it on both sides, one minute per side, all right? That's gonna bring us up to about 135 something temperature. That's how it's gonna look, right? So it's gonna be a little pink in the, uh, in the middle, but not super well done. Our rice just finished up. So we're gonna take a look and see how this went. Let's vent that daggone thing right there. Man, these things stress me out. I'm always wondering if this thing's ever gonna blow up on me. The key here, as soon as this lid comes off, you wanna stir your rice. Look at that, man. Look at that. Now for dinner. I'm going to eat this entire pot of rice, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take me about two big spoonfuls, put it on a plate. I'm going to grate some more of this Talamook cheese right here, and I'm going to layer it there. And then I'm going to put some more rice on top of it, then I'm going to put some more cheese on it. Then I'm going to put some more, right? It's got a lot of cheese in it. And I'm going to mix that all up, and I'm going to eat my steak and my rice for dinner. The key to eating the steak is eat all of the steak. Don't, don't leave the fat. Eat the fat and everything. And eat it with your hands. Do not eat steak with a fork. You cut it in slices like this and you eat it with your hands. All right? You're not going to get the same nutritional value out of this piece of meat if you try to eat it with a dang fork. That's my dinner, steak and rice and cheese, about three days a week. The only other things I eat for dinner is chicken breast and turkey tacos. So about a half an hour after you eat dinner, you're gonna wanna go ahead and have dessert. I'll let my dinner settle, I come back into the house and I eat me a big old bowl of this right here. This is Telemook chocolate peanut butter ice cream. Every powerful man that I've ever known eats ice cream. Every one, of, every one eats ice cream. If you don't eat ice cream, you will not reach your maximum potential. I promise you. So I go through about three or four of these a week. And, and that's how I end my day. That's everything I eat in a day. Thanks for tuning in. Enough said.